Hey, what's going on? My name is Mike. Welcome to Full Throttle Films, the channel where we build bikes, we ride them, and all around just love motorcycles. Today's video is gonna be awesome. I'm gonna be going through and showing all of the bikes that I have gotten since I moved down here to Mexico and bikes that I've built and customized here on this channel. If you're new, you guys definitely need to check out these builds. The bikes are absolutely insane. We are also about to make the neighborhood absolutely hate us because we're gonna be starting all these bikes up at the same time, which I've never done before. And I'll be going through and giving each of them some revs so you guys can hear how good they sound. So along with that fun, I'm just gonna be talking a little bit about each of these bikes, how I came about owning them. One of them's for sale. Most of you might know that. I'll also talk a little bit about what modifications I've done to them since most of these bikes are pretty custom except for the pitter over there. It's pretty much stock. And as you all watch this video, if you have any questions about any of these bikes, drop them down in the comments. I will definitely answer them and I probably will have an answer for just about anything you wanna know. We're gonna be starting with the littlest bike over here. This little baby is a 2015 KLX 110L. So this bike has the clutch. I always wanted a pit bike. I didn't know how bad I wanted one until I actually got one. This is easily one of the most fun bikes that I have. And as you can see, it's in pretty decent shape minus the completely mangled foot pegs, but I did that. Other than that, this bike is pretty clean. It's very original with the exception of the big bars that I added about a month or two ago, which this was the best upgrade I've ever done to this pit bike. And it just gives you so much more room when you're riding the bike, sitting on it. I'm able to get my knees up under there a lot easier. And overall, it just makes the bike feel a lot more like a big bike. Hopefully we will get to do a build on this bike one day. We obviously have two builds going on at the moment. That's why you don't see the XR50 that would be here. We're working on that. Check out the first video if you haven't already. We're also working on an XR250 on the side. It's taken almost a year and I'm a bad friend. So I'm gonna finish that bike soon. And maybe next year we'll have some money that we can throw at this little green turd and make it a lot cooler. But in the meantime, this little bike rips and I absolutely love it. And next up we have this beautiful 2018 CRF 450R. This was the first bike that I got when I moved down to Mexico. First brand new dirt bike I've ever purchased in my life. Probably the last because I ran out of money now. But this thing is absolutely sick. I'm not gonna say it's my favorite bike. You'll have to wait and guess which one is actually my favorite. This bike is probably by far the best of all of them, with the exception that this Yamaha is completely set up for supermoto. But I'm a big Honda guy if you haven't noticed already. Speaking of not noticing, I'm a huge dickhead and didn't realize that I had my autofocus turned off for like the last two minutes of talking. So, yep. This will look a lot better now. This bike is 100% Mexicana. This is a Mexican moto right here. I got it from Guadalajara, Mexico. I had to order that bike because the 450Rs are very rare here and not a lot of people buy them. Not a lot of people sell them. So you got to throw the big bread to get one of these babies. This bike has only about 30 hours on it and I've actually had it for two years, which is crazy. I've barely put any hours on this bike, but with all my injuries, I just had to take so much time off and never got to use it. And that's also why I do not want to sell this bike, which I almost considered selling it, but I decided it's better to just hang on to it. I'm never going to get a bike in this condition for the price that I was going to sell it for. And this bike is actually pretty much all stock now. I even put the stock pipes and ECU back on because I thought I was gonna sell the bike, 
So I'm going to be putting those mods back on eventually. It's not going to sound as good today without the Yoshimira pipes. But it's such a good bike just the way it is, the way it comes. I've just got the black plastic seat cover and the black tusk wheels. Those were real cheap. I'm not out there racing motocross or doing anything really extreme with these wheels. I've done a good job of keeping this bike very fresh, super clean. I just washed all of the bikes yesterday. Boy, that was a lot of work washing all four of these babies, but definitely worth it. I just did a crazy photo shoot with all these bikes and got some amazing photos out of today. Not going to talk any more about this one. Let's move on to my favorite. You might have guessed it. The CR252 stroke Supermoto. So this thing is one of a kind. I mean, there are some other CR250s out there, but not with this color setup that you see here. I just came up with this as I was building the bike. I didn't originally know I wanted it to be white and gold, but super glad that I ended up going with that. And in the last video, I actually said that this was a 2002, but it's not, it's a 2003. So these bikes do have the RC valve, the power valve here that you see, and pretty nice feature, but it's another thing that can break. The 2000 and 2001 CRs did not have that, which I actually had one of those back in the day and it was a badass CR. The 2000 CR250 rips. And I forgot to mention, but this was the first bike that I also did some building on. I did not do a complete build where I stripped the bike apart, but I did put a bunch of bolt-on upgrades to this thing when I used to race motocross down here. So I learned a lot on this bike, but this bike is very special because it's the first bike that I completely stripped all the way down and rebuilt it 100%. So it definitely has a big spot in my heart. And by the way, if you want to learn how to work on bikes, get an old two-stroke. It's the best bike you can learn on. Even the engine, which was the hardest part of the whole rebuild, was just really not that difficult. There's a lot of information on it out there and it's just not that hard to do. So I recommend for a lot of people who want to learn to work on bikes, go ahead and get a two-stroke or something simple like a pit bike. As for the mods with this bike, I've got the Warp 9 Elite Supermoto wheels on here. It's a four and a quarter inch in the rear. Both are 17 inch rims and the front I believe is a three and a half. It's just your standard size Supermoto wheels. They're actually the same size as the wheels on here. So I'm running Pirelli Diablo Rosso tires on this bike. And these are street bike tires or just street tires for Supermoto. So they're not gonna work at all off-road, which I've done a little bit of off-roading on this bike and it pretty much is just spinning all the time. But when I took this bike out on the track the other weekend, it did great and these tires were nice and grippy. I've got the FMF fatty pipe up front and in the back, it's got the titanium two. This bike also has the V-Force 3 reed system along with the Electron H-Series carburetor. This bike has a good 40 to 45 hours on it. So I'm getting ready to take a look at the piston, but I'll probably wait another 15 hours to be honest because bike's still running pretty good. So I bought this bike used here in Mexico for $2,200, which thought was an all right deal at the time, but I ended up having to replace almost everything on the bike. I should have just looked for one that might have been cheaper. This bike also had a crack in the frame up here that I had to get welded. So just some things that you run into when you buy bikes down here in Mexico. I had lights running off of a battery before, but I'm going to be putting a high output stator so I don't have to rely on charging it anymore. And I've got a new rear brake light and we're gonna be doing a full light kit on this bike in the future. Still got this one finger clutch lever, which as you can see, 
really is one finger and this thing was worth every penny. So this bike has the all time fun factor award. It used to go pretty fast. I got it up to 87 miles per hour before with the smaller rear sprocket, but now I put a, a larger rear sprocket back on. So it's just great for the track or ripping around doing some wheelies. Has a 320 rotor just with the caliper extension bracket and the stock caliper on there. So that's pretty much it for this bike. If you guys got any questions, like I said, just drop them down below. We will move on to the last and definitely not least YZ450F Supermoto. This bike is a 2014 model, although you wouldn't believe it because it looks like it's brand new 2020. And this bike is what we built for the second complete build on the channel. So after we did a two stroke, you know we had to do a four stroke just to prove that we could. And also obviously I wanted to learn how to do it. There really is a lot of differences between these two motorcycles, although they do share a lot of similarities as well. Point I'm trying to make is this bike was a lot more complicated to build. It has way more parts on it, and I had to spend, you guessed it, a lot more money on it. I also went completely crazy with this build, not sparing anything. I spent an incredible amount of time on this build, making sure I got all the details just the way I wanted. There really is no comparison and the amount of modification that was done to these two bikes and these two builds. Don't worry, baby, I still love you. But this YZ450 has all the bells and whistles, everything, you name it. This right here being one of the absolute most important upgrades. I don't know if I'll ever be able to afford another brake system like this. There's honestly so much to talk about with this bike. I'm not gonna be able to talk about everything on it, but I do have a walk around video that I'll include in the description, the link to it. That video talks about everything I did to this bike and talks about the cost to do it. So if I don't go over something right now, you can check out that video for more information. Like I said, it has everything. It's fully loaded out the door. I might add, this bike is for sale still and the price has dropped dramatically. So if anyone is interested in this bike, definitely holler at me. Price is negotiable, but you absolutely would not believe the amount of money that I spent on this build. Maybe it's obvious, maybe it isn't. All in all, this bike is another one of a kind. You're not gonna find another bike this clean with this much modification done to it. This thing has only about two and a half hours of use on the motorcycle. Everything's been rebuilt, everything in the engine, all the suspensions have been rebuilt, and basically all the parts on it are brand new. This thing is just bike porn to the max. Had to get the full throttle films thrown in there on this one. When I got this bike, it was a complete clapper. I drove three hours to go pick this thing up because it was the cheapest bike I could find on Facebook Market. Sure enough, I ended up paying for it later again. This thing was an absolute basket case. But now when you look at it, it's absolutely beautiful. Well, I think that's gonna do it for the bike talk let's go ahead and fire all these things up at the same time it's about to be so loud
Wow, that was freaking amazing. One of the sickest things I've probably ever done in my life. Hearing all of these together at the same time was just ridiculous. I can only hope that you guys got some real satisfaction out of all of those rev bombs we just dropped. You gotta comment down below which bike sounds the best. I mean, you can comment which bike you like the best, but what I care about is which one you think sounds the best. Too bad I don't have the Yoshimura pipes on this bike. And just for that, I'll give you a taste of what it sounds like. Yeah, that sounds a little bit better. So tell me which do you think sounds the best out of these three. Don't even tell me that bike sounds the best because you're freaking smoking something. Gotta know what you guys think. Whew, your boy is sweating it up out here. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. I had a lot of fun making it and hopefully I get to make another video like this in the future, maybe with a few more bikes or probably just the same ones, but I guarantee you we're gonna be making some changes on all of them soon. The only problem now with starting all of these bikes up is I really wanna go ride. So I'm gonna need to pick one of these and probably go out for a little ride after this. We will be getting back to these bike builds just after this video. Hold up. You didn't really think I was gonna leave you without some epic cinematic shots, did you? I got you, fam. subscribe yet hit that subscribe button like this video while you're at it catch you guys in the next one peace